Okay, dimensional analysis. We're going to briefly go over dimensional analysis. We don't really go into uh, dimensional analysis in too much detail. But dimensional analysis is one way of checking your equations. Um, a lot of times, what you'll do is you'll finish a problem, you'll want to check it to make sure you didn't make any errors or you didn't derive something um, that wasn't correct. And, you know, you know, make calculations twice, cut once. Uh, but in any case, while you can check the actual numbers by redoing the problem again and again, another way to make sure that you derive the equations properly or you transformed uh, equations properly algebraically is to look at what are the quantities on each side of the equation. Remember what an equation is. It's saying one side is equal to the other side. Okay? So the numbers on one side have to equal the numbers on the other side. That makes perfect sense. But the dimensions on one side have to be the same as the dimensions on the other side. Okay? You can't say 2 kilometers equals uh, 39 kilograms. Two different dimensions. On one side you have distance or length, on the other side you have mass. It doesn't work that way. So the dimensions, the, the type of units, have to match on each side. Length, mass, time, combination, any of these can be treated algebraically. You have to make sure that you've properly added, subtracted, multiplied, divided, or even done exponents properly. Very good example right here. On the left hand side of the equation we have speed. On the right hand side we have distance and time. Okay? The dimensions on each side have to match. We know that speed is how far per how much time. So it's the length divided by time. Okay? On the other side, distance is length. Time, well time is time. And we see that matches on the other side. So length divided by time, length divided by time. Make sure that the, the dimensions match on each side. Here's Newton's second law. Newton's second law of motion is something that we get into uh, a little bit later in the course. But we've already introduced the idea of force, the Newton. You know it better as the pound if you're more used to the U.S. customary unit. And Newton's second law says that the amount of force is equal to mass times acceleration. Well, the Newton, okay, which is the unit of force, as we saw before, was the kilogram meter per second squared. Okay? You have units of mass, units of length, divided by the square of the units of time. So that is its dimension. Um, mass times length divided by time squared. On the other side, okay, the equation mass times acceleration, you better have the same thing. You better have mass, length, divided by time squared. Well, here, ma. m is kilogram, units of mass. a is acceleration, units of length, divided by time squared. All right? And you can see that this dimension matches this dimension. So this, through dimensional analysis, is valid. OK? Um, oh, later on. We will be talking about uh, different equations. We'll be looking at distance as a function of velocity, acceleration, and time for uh, constant acceleration. And um, you know, this is a good example right here, which uh, allows you to test whether or not uh, particular equations are consistent. So for instance, um, what do we have here? Consider the physical quantities. S, which is distance, V, which is velocity, acceleration is A, T is time. Okay? So here you can see S is, you know, uh, units of length, velocity is length, divided by time. That little negative 1 means, you know, 1 over. It's the um, multiplic multiplicative, I knew I was going to stumble on that one, inverse. And then acceleration is length divided by time squared. Okay, determine whether each of the following equations is dimensionally consistent. So here, we have distance on the left side, velocity times time, velocity is distance divided by time times time again, well that's distance again, that works, 
and here we have one half the acceleration times time squared. Okay? Acceleration, distance divided by time squared, multiply that by time squared, you get distance again. So on the left hand side, everything is distance. On the right hand side, everything is distance. That works. Okay? So this is valid. S is L, VT is L, one half AT squared. One half AT squared is L. Okay, you'll know this is one of the kinematics for constant acceleration. We do it again for this other. Okay, you have distance on this side, velocity times time squared. Well, you can see right off the bat that's not consistent. Okay, on the left hand side you have distance. Here you have distance divided by time times time squared. That's distance times time, so that doesn't work. Here's another one right here. Velocities on the left hand side of the equation and you have a trigonometric function which is dimensionless. Basically, in any trigonometric function, the dimension has to be 1 inside the argument. Okay? AT squared, well, those dimensions are, of course, distance. S, also distance, so distance divided by distance gives you 1. So within the argument, dimensionally, it's okay to use that trigonometric function. But the trigonometric function Dimensionless. On this side, it's length divided by time, so that wouldn't work right there. Okay? Later on, we'll see similar equations to this, but you might have like initial velocity in front of the, the sign to, to balance the two sides dimensionally. And again, you can see that also right here. So, dimensional analysis is not going to tell you whether or not your numbers are correct, so there's no numerical. Uh, analysis or numeric error, error checking here, but it can determine whether or not an equation is invalid. Maybe you just didn't derive it the correct way or copy it down the correct way, but it allows for a check uh, in terms of uh, something that's going to show up in the units because the units are based on the dimensions that we're using.